It's just Bruce, he don't bite. <laughs> Hello. Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Bruce. Today, we're gonna cook something really special. Chicken egg rolls. My way. Well, actually it's not my way, and I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, about 13 years ago, my wife took me to this place that had chicken egg rolls that she loved. And it was a Chinese, a Polynesian restaurant in Pittsburgh. And uh, she loved these egg rolls so much she wanted me to try And I'm like, egg rolls? Eh, whatever. Well, I had one. And they were really, really good. So uh, we go up there and get egg rolls. Yay. The uh, place was, it's, it's an older restaurant. It was a family restaurant. Went down from, uh, used to be called Chin's Polynesian Garden. Then it was called Moy's Cove. And then it was called Cody's Place. All in the same family. Well, my mother-in-law actually had worked there back when it was Chin's. So, just keep that in mind. So, anyway, Cody's place ended up closing down. And we couldn't go there to get egg rolls anymore. So my wife was a little disappointed. But then we heard a place downtown here in Irwin, Pennsylvania, called Teddy's. Had the recipe, the same recipe they were using. So we went down there, and sure enough, there's these egg rolls. And uh, my wife was happy again. Well, then that place closed down. So, my wife missed her egg rolls. So, since, you know, retired chef and all, I went, through trial and error, I duplicated the recipe as best I could. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do, do, do today. They've got a top secret ingredient. That's what, that's where my mother-in-law comes in. Because I couldn't get them right. And I finally asked my mother-in-law, I said, they're missing something. And she said, she told me what it was. And I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. you got to wait until later in the video to see it. So, let's get started making these egg rolls. Uh, the only difference between these egg rolls and the ones at Chins and Teddy's is the size. I couldn't find the uh, wonton wrappers that were big enough. I don't know where to go. So if anybody knows where I can get bigger wonton wrappers than what I'm going to use, let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate it. Also, if you watch to the end of the end of the video, I got another bonus recipe for you uh, for, for a sauce for the egg rolls. So let's get going. I know you don't want to hear me BS anymore. Let's get into the video. Okay, we're just going to quickly go over the ingredients. I just chopped all this stuff up, and the kitchen's a mess now, but while I have them together, I want to show you. And I, I like to make sure I have all my ingredients together before I start cooking. That way, if I'm missing something, I can run out and get it before I get stuck in the middle, which is terrible. So, right here, we got some bok choy. That's about three and a half cups worth. Um, finely chopped. I cut it up with my hand. Itty bitty piece, you know, the size you would expect to be in an egg roll. Uh, over here, I got four cups of cabbage, shredded up and diced up. As small as I could. I've got some uh, one can of water chestnuts that I ran a knife through and cut them up. You want everything to be tiny for this. I got about three and a half cups of grilled chicken that's already cooked. I shredded that up, cut it up in little teeny tiny pieces. I got a cup of shredded carrots here for color. I got five cloves of garlic that I ground up. We got uh, sesame oil. Um, I meant to get ginger at the store, but I forgot. But I have ginger here in the cupboard, so we're going to use some dried ground ginger. And I wanted to try this. This I never used this before. It's hoisin sauce. I'm going to put a little dab in some of them just to see if it makes a difference. Now, there's one ingredient missing over here. Well, there's a couple. I don't have my eggs out and I don't have my wonton shells. But there's one ingredient. It's a top secret ingredient. And that's coming up later. I'll tell you what my top secret ingredient is, which took me forever to figure out whenever I, de whenever I um, figured out this recipe. So let's get started. I'm using today a regular stainless steel pan. It's the biggest skillet I have. You can use an iron skillet, whatever your biggest skillet is that you want to use, because you might have to do this in batches. So I'm just going to pull about a tablespoon of oil, a little tablespoon and a half. This is canola oil I'm using today. You can use vegetable oil. I wouldn't recommend using olive oil. Use some kind of high temperature oil. I'm going to get that hot. My pan was already hot when I poured it in there, so it won't take long. Now I'm trying to figure out if I have to do this in batches or not, because I've cut my recipe down. So, I think, I don't think this will all fit, so I'm going to do one batch. Let's just go half of my bok choy, half of my cabbage. I'll save this for the second batch. I also want half of my carrots. So the carrots are mainly just in there for color, you don't got to put a lot in. Half of my garlic. I think two batches will do it for this. And I'm just going to saute this, like I said, on a high heat real quick. I think I'm getting it everywhere. So we 
got our cabbage, bok choy, and carrots in there right now. Ooh, you know what I almost forgot? Half of our water chestnuts. Put them in there too. So that's all our veggies. Oh, obviously you can use a wok for this if you want to. Do it the old fashioned way here. Off it a little bit. Now, we're, we don't want to cook these, we just want to zap it real quick for like about a minute. So now we can put in half our chicken. The chicken's already cooked, so we don't have to worry about cooking it up. We just want to get it mixed in there. So that's half our cooked chicken. We are going to put the drizzle of sesame oil. I just make a circle. Circle of sesame oil. We don't need a lot. We don't want to put too much liquid inside these. I'm also going to show you how to drain this. Here's some hoisin sauce. That's the new ingredient that I was told I should be putting in there, but I haven't been. I'm a little anxious to see how they'll come out. Mix that all up in there. Like I said, I don't necessarily want to cook this cabbage the whole way through. It's actually cooking a little overcooked for my taste as it is, but i got to get this mixed up. Okay, that's that. Let's get our ginger in there. That's about a teaspoon, two teaspoons of ginger for what I'm doing. Like I said, I'm, I am doing this in batches. It's hard enough for me to cut down this recipe. But we're going to do the best we can. I am about ready to show you what the secret ingredient is. And I think it's going to surprise most of you because when I realized what it was, I was surprised. Secret ingredient is just peanut butter that I melted on the stove at a low temperature. And once again, we're just going to make a circle. Circle of peanut butter. If I come to a spiral right into the middle. That is our secret ingredient, peanut butter. Who would have thought that, huh? It took me a long time to analyze this recipe. And get that mixed up real good. I can kill my heat now. It's done. So I didn't want to... I actually, while talking, I cooked my cabbage a little bit too long, but that's not going to hurt anything. Now this batch... I'm going to put it on a, um, in this case I'm using my strainer from my air fryer because I want to drain all the liquid out while it's cooling. So I'm just going to pour it in like that. Let's get all the goodies out of there. I'll spread it out because I want this to get cool. You can put it in the refrigerator because we're not going to mess with it until it cools down. So that's, that's one half. Like I said, when this is cool, we will go on to the next step. For now, this baby's going into the refrigerator. Okay, so rolling these are pretty easy, and that's what we're going to do next. What you need is some egg roll wraps. Some people call them wontons. I got these at the local grocery store. Pretty easy to find. They used to keep them in the produce department. Now these were over by the uh, uh, over by the deli. So you might have to look for them, but a lot of restaurants have them. I know Walmart has them. I didn't get this at Walmart. I got this somewhere else. But anyway, then what you're going to need is a couple egg yolks. I already separated and put them in here. You don't really have to separate them if you don't want to, but um, I separate them. We're going to use that as a as a binder. Ooh, lay an egg roll wrap down there. Here's my mix that's been that's been cooled down and drained. I had it in a colander like thing. Now this is where you're going to do a little guesswork how much uh, stuff. Of course, I wash my hands to figure out how much stuff you want to put in there. And put it in this. A little lower to the center, take your wonton wrap, fold it in half, and you're going to slide it back. What I'm doing is I'm packing the material in there. After you do it a few hundred times, it becomes easy. 
So here's my material. I'm going to roll it a little bit. I'm going to take this corner, fold it in, and I'm going to take this corner, fold it in. You want these edges to be completely covered and try to get them sealed as best as you can. And you take your egg wash, put a little bit on the edges like this, and then we finish sealing it. Just like that. And you see all my seals are good here. Seals good there, there. And we'll set that aside and we're going to do this until we run out of stuff. I'll do another one then I'll fast forward through. So you're going to put our wonton down. A little bit of stuff. Like I said, this is touch and go. There's no exact measurement. So do it a few times and uh, get used to it. If they don't come out right the first time, well, that's okay. If they do have a little hole in it, a little bit of grease is going to get in there. It really isn't that big of a deal. But you want to keep your guts away from the oil. Because when you cook these, you're just going to actually be cooking the wonton wrapper itself and not the veggies inside. Because we've already, we've already made the mistake of overcooking them the first time. Which, hopefully you'll learn from my mistake and you won't do that yourself. And there's another one, nice and sealed. Set it aside. I'm going to go ahead and finish doing these. We'll fast forward to the cooking part. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. We got twenty out of that pack. And I find these these packs that I buy sometimes I'll have twenty, sometimes I'll have up to twenty-three in there. They're sold by weight, not number, which is strange. But anyway, we did pretty good. That's all I all the guts I have left compared to the one pack. I don't want to open that second pack unless I have to, so I might just eat those guts the way they are. So here we go, we got twenty. 20 egg rolls ready to go into the fryer and let's get started on that okay today I'm going to make these with uh, a deep fryer um, if you don't have a deep fryer don't worry you can get a, a big big pot and put about an inch and a half of oil you can use vegetable oil, corn oil canola oil the best would be peanut oil if you really want to do it that way but I have this heated up to 350 and we really don't need this basket, so I'm going to set this basket aside. And uh, got my trusty tongs. Got to do the test click with the with the tongs. It's tradition. And all we're going to do is just I'm going to put a couple of these in here. Here's one, a two, three, four. I could probably put six in there, but I like to have room for them to move around. What, what we got to do is carefully push these around so they crisp all over the place. They, they'll start to float and they'll start turning golden brown. Remember, we're not cooking the inside. We already did the inside. We're just going to crisp that shell on the outside to heat it through. Crisp it up nice golden brown. They don't take long. It's been in there less than a minute. Just gently toss them around. I don't know if you can see this one. This one's tail end is sinking. Now what that means is I didn't seal it good enough. It won't really hurt it, but your goal is to not have that happen. But if you ever watch my videos, there's always something I mess up. I think we've been in there about a total of a minute. Now, if you're going to cook these from frozen, because you can freeze these after you cook them, put them in a Ziploc bag, nice tight, get the air out, and you can freeze them. They should be good for up to about two months. Yeah, that's about what we're looking for there. Nice golden brown on that. Let's set that in the cooling rack. Take the rest of them out. This was the one that was sinking on the end. You see, I got some oil out of that. That's another reason we use a cooling rack on top of another pan. If you don't have a cooling rack, you can set it on some paper towels. This isn't even a cooling rack. This is called a crisping tray. Let's 
Oh, I, you don't want to put these back in a fryer after you take them out of the freezer. You want to put them in a toaster oven or perfect air fryer, but you won't put them back in the oil. Uh, you can bake them in the oven if you don't have those things. I've got all kind of kitchen gadgets here. But I think the best way to reheat these, whether they're frozen or whether you just eat them later in the day, the best way is definitely an air fryer or a toaster oven. So I'm going to go ahead and fry all these off. And then my favorite time, taste test. And there we have it. We have 18 fresh egg rolls right from the fryer, ready to eat chicken egg rolls. It's one of my wife's favorites. There's 18. Remember I said earlier we had 20? Well, that's why there's 18. My wife got hungry. She's having her lunch right now. So she couldn't wait for me to finish the video. So let's go on to the taste test. And here's our finished product. I cut one open already so you can see inside it. Oh, the yummy goodness. It is time to taste it. And it's funny because I went to the refrigerator to try and get some sauce to dip it in. And I realized I don't have anything. So I'm not, I'm not going to use ketchup. So I whipped up some duck sauce real quick. So we're going to try it with this duck sauce. And I'm going to give you a recipe for this duck sauce too. Just a simple apricot duck sauce. But here's my... Here's my tasting time. I've been waiting for this for hours. Mm. You hear that crunch? Happy, happy. Mm. Anyway, the duck sauce I'm telling you about, I got it right here on the board if you want to copy it down. If I forget to put it in the comments, because I usually do. Excuse me. You need three, three, your quarter cup apricot jam. Now you gotta make sure you get jam or preserves, not jelly. Do you want to know the difference between jam and jelly? That's a dirty joke. Go look it up somewhere else. Four tablespoons of rice vinegar. Gotta use rice vinegar. Won't taste right if you don't. Half a teaspoon of soy sauce. Two cloves of garlic minced up real nice. A teaspoon of ground ginger, or if you want to buy some fresh ginger, which I should have bought for the egg rolls in the first place, you can grind, you can grind that up like garlic too. Uh, one half teaspoon chili powder and an eight teaspoon cayenne pepper. And I just threw it in my uh, food processor. This is done. And it's delicious. It's delicious. Something easy you can make at home too to go along with it. Or you can go to the store and buy a jar of duck sauce. Or whatever sauce you choose. Anyway, that's about it. Um, any questions, leave them in the comments. Give me a like and a share, please. And uh, coming up, I got, I got a lot of good things coming up. Uh, like I said uh, in the other video. Um, I'm going to be making beef wellington this weekend for my wife for Valentine's Day. I'm going to video that. And something else sounds sounds uh, sounds hard to do, but it's really not. Um, it's really an easy dish to make. Just a little time consuming, but it's worth it. I'm also going to do show you how they do fish fries at the fire halls. I don't know if it's popular around the United States. I know it's popular here in Pennsylvania. And lately they haven't been doing a lot of them because of the supply and demand issues with the truckers and COVID and all those reasons. Um, so I'm going to teach you how to make your own fish at home for fish fry style like you get at the uh, fire hall, clubs, wherever they have them. And hopefully that, that'll get you through your Fridays for Lent or you know whatever you fish you can have at any time. You don't have to just have it during Lent. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to make? Oh, I got to make a big batch of chili, but that's for the Legion. I already did a video on how to make some good chili, so check that out if you get a chance. Anyway, thanks for stopping by my kitchen. I'm Bruce, and I'll catch you next time. It's just Bruce, he don't bite. <laughs> Hello.